South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Jeannie D, and this is Afternoon Express, this glorious Thursday afternoon. Today also marks the 20th anniversary of the late Princess Diana's death. What an incredibly, incredibly amazing woman. So beautiful, such a great mother, such a generous philanthropist and all-round inspiration. Remember, in a world full of Kardashians, always remind yourself to be a Princess Diana. Now, today we focus our show on exciting young entrepreneurs. And first up, we chat to two guys from Cape Town who found a lack of events and experiences catered towards young black South Africans outside of the regular club scene. So they started their own events and marketing company. We also meet a man from Kailicha who has started his own mobile cinema that supports local filmmakers and gives the communities access to cinema. Plus, we are joined by an art specialist who tells us what to look out for when investing in local art and why it's so important. Now, don't forget to vote on our Twitter poll for today. We're asking, does supporting local entrepreneurs influence your buying decisions? So let us know on Twitter. All you need to do is tweet us on our, at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag Afternoon Express and visit our Facebook page as well. Over to you, Danilo. It's so good to be with you on this Thursday afternoon. I've got this massive grin on my face. And the reason is because we get to focus on something that is so close to my heart. As a young South African, the future of our economic crises in the country is going to be through young entrepreneurs who decide to take the risk and to fill in gaps in our, in, in our country, to provide jobs, to be able to expose people to new things. And that's exactly what we get to explore today. So all the young entrepreneurs are tuning into the show today, or parents of youngsters who you know aren't going to get corporate jobs, this is going to be the show to stay tuned to. Now, now, starting off, Tebe Montler and Bradley Ndlovu, two entrepreneurs from Cape Town, noticed that there was a lack of high-end events targeted at young black South Africans outside of the regular club scene, as Jeannie was mentioning. So they started their own events company and marketing company with the goal of filling this gap. Welcome to The Loft, you two. <laughs> Hi, Danilo. Okay. How's it? How's it? Thanks good, for good, good. Us. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you guys. You are doing, I think, exactly with what is needed. You're exposing youngsters to new things. Uh, but let's first begin with how the entrepreneurial journey started for you two. How did this company get started? Okay, um, so we we based in Cape Town. We we used to go out quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> so at some point, it's just like uh, we there were there were no new experiences, and we were looking for something new. And we noticed that a lot of people were looking for something new, a new experience. And that's how we decided that you know what, actually let's try and create these spaces where we can offer something new, something different, an mm. experience and, uh, you know, an entry point to a, you know, a different kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Let's use specific words for this because, I mean, you guys were speaking about the party lifestyle. Why have you attributed a young black South African to that market? And wh why are you feeling like young black South Africans were only going to sort of parties and those were the events open to them? What are the other things that they needed to be exposed to? Okay, so it's, that wasn't just like the only thing, but I think the big thing was that they, you know, without, without a bit of imagination in terms of how you can use your time uh, entertainment-wise, uh, what you can do with, you know, your time. Uh, you, you, you're left to, you know, what people tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think what our business does is we give you just that bit of imagination to say, you know, you know, you can go out and have a great time at the club, but you can also, you know, enjoy a particular kind of event that yeah. is daytime or that is evening. That's not going to run until like two o'clock in the morning. You're not mm -hmm. going to have a hangover and still enjoy yourself, still have a good time. Okay. So Bradley, mm -hmm. what kind of events are those? Like what are the experiences you're helping youngsters get through? So basically it's lifestyle events. When we say lifestyle, it's not too much of a club scene and also not um, basically living in Cape Town and our business being based in Cape Town, um, it's been more of like an aspirational kind of, is it a winter dining, is it a summer feel? Um, these events are usually daytime in the summer, and then in the evening they are more wintry. Um, our focus there is obviously to make sure that people can get their network and connect, um, and for any of the brands that help us partner in launching those events or whenever they are, uh, they can leave there with knowing that the particular brand or product has reached. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. obviously, uh, Cape Town is known for being segregated just by its sort of the way that the land is, is so structural um, inequality that's been created. There's also a cultural dynamic. There's a whole bunch of students. So there's there's a real mix mash of people around the Western Cape. And so I'm really wanting to understand why it is that young black South Africans you feel need to get given these uh, sort of opportunities to explore new things. Because why is it made so exclusively for for non young white, black South Africans? Again, because we're based in Cape Town, so without the knowledge, the foreknowledge of the kind of 
you know, space or the kind of event that you could possibly go to, the kind of lifestyle that you could enjoy, mm. you know, the kind of experience that you could have in Cape Town, um, you wouldn't know to, you know, to go paragliding, to really, you know, hike or have, yeah. there's so many whiskey tastings that happen in Cape Town or, you know, cognac tasting, wine tasting, cheese, mm. all these different sort of experiences that you can have that just really add a different layer onto mm. your life and the way that you enjoy it. Without, um, you know, access to those kind of spaces or at least the imagination, then you, 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 you know, you lost yeah, you stay, you the You stay wins, in the bubble, yeah. I'd yeah. imagine. Mm. All right, so you guys also create these events that are free then for people to come to. It's a nice entry point for them to get involved and to explore these new ideas. Um, how do, what does it take to start a business in the country? Talk to me, Brady. Like, how, how did you guys start your company? <laughs> how does one young South African do that? I mean, uh, what are some of your experiences in terms of running a business? Well, I mean, number one is ambition. That's something that I have to say. Um, and it's very easy on our end to actually run a business that is actually your life, you know? Like, we live the lifestyle. Um, and, like, I come, yeah, I, my experiences are in business, um, where I am, like, within the Western Cape, I've worked with craft leaguers, so in distribution and sales. So, like, I've had the confidence and the belief to walk into spaces, but, like, I mean, with our events and what we're trying to create is something that is more, okay? okay. But being a young entrepreneur is something that is very <laughs> challenging, mm -hmm. you know, but it is on your own terms. Okay. Very quickly, though, from your side, uh, just uh, last thoughts, Tebe, on, on, on what it takes to start a company in a current South Africa in the climate yeah. that we're in at the moment. I think Cape Town's been a brilliant place. There's a lot of small businesses in Cape Town that are willing, that have been willing to, you know, engage with us, participate in, uh, um, you know, the business that we've, you know, decided to go into. And I think, just like Bradley said, because we've always sort of, uh, the reason why we went into this business is really because we were passionate about it mm -hmm. and we, we thought that we had something different to offer. So I think there's also an element of innovation and, you know, disruption and just mm -hmm. like understanding the space and the environment that you're in. I think that's very important in terms of entrepreneurship because a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel yeah, yeah. and sometimes it's not necessary. Not necessary. You okay. know, sometimes you just need to find just a gap yeah. and, and, and match that with your passion and... And yeah, and, and you go to go. Love it. Awesome, you two. Congratulations on a great idea. I think it's awesome. I can't wait to even come to some of these <laughs> events because I think the first phase is getting these young black South Africans to go and do those activities. And then let's in engage with each other. Let's incorporate our societies, our cultures together so we can explore and experience these things together. And you guys are doing the first phase for that. So thank you for Definitely. coming to join us on thank the show. You, thank you for having sharing us. Sharing ideas. Yeah, thanks for yes. us. Absolute yeah. pleasure. <laughs> coming up after the break, if you ever wanted to know how the word milk and voices fit together, milk voices after these. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, being an artist comes with its own set of entrepreneurial challenges, and being a playwright is one of the more difficult careers to sustain. We heard about a young writer and director by the name of Slindlitle Mtembu, who is showcasing her debut award-winning musical at the Joburg Theatre. It's called Milked Voice, and it follows the journey of an eloquent woman as she tries to escape her past and traverse the challenges that come with being a young artist in the big city. As they milked my humming voice. As they milked my humming voice. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Milked Voice is an original South African piece of work which combines traditional theatre with elements of jazz performance. The show was written and directed by rising talent Slindile M. Tembu. What it means for me to be a young female director is it really is an honour because, firstly, as a black female, young, writer and director, it's tough. It really is tough for your voice to be heard because still people mislead females and think that they can manipulate us. But I honestly just want to encourage females to just really believe in yourself and really believe in the power of your pen or in the power of your voice and really write stories. Write stories that can heal us too. Mook's voice started with a school tour and was so successful among learners that Mabu Art Foundation will be taking the show to more schools this year. Uh, how Mabu Art Foundation came about was uh, myself and Snindile uh, collaborated and formed a company called Mabu Art Foundation. It was created for the industry, for the artists, where we can all collaborate and tell stories or tell uh, what we think is relevant in today's society. <laughs> What made me get involved in this story, I think, uh, it, it spoke directly to me as well, you know, as a producer that, wow, I need to look at my dreams and really take them seriously because, you know, there was little things that I used to doubt myself, you know, like, oh, can I really do that? Can I not really, you know, it just made me excited to work with people that are so talented, you know, and that are willing to do everything for nothing, you know, because it's a groundbreaking story. It, it, it seems to be a simple topic, but actually it's a big topic because it talks about self and what you believe in and your voice in society. Look at the person that you have allowed yourself to become. I need you to understand that the only way that I can let go is to leave my stained past and forget about this trapped world. Milk Voice is about four characters who are artists who are in search of reliving their dreams. And these characters are the bass player, the saxophone lady, the eloquent woman, and the producer. And all these characters are yearning to let go of their past, of exploitation, their past of um, not believing in self and not allowing themselves to really express themselves. And I felt that the reason why I'm, I wrote Milk Voice, it was a guide to guide not only just artists, but society in general in believing in your dream. And one of the main themes that come out of Milk Voice is a suitcase. So each character carries a suitcase which represents their dream and how far they want to go for their dream or the quality of the dream that they have. And how the story begins is they get inspired by a woman who sings in this unknown city. And each character is literally in search to find this, this woman who's called the eloquent woman. I am a producer. No, 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 actually. I am the producer. And there's one character that's called the producer who really like pieces all these characters together. And through the story, he really encourages them to let go of the past, to really start believing in himself again. Actually, we are all not yet ready to meet one another. <laughs> My character in Milk Voice is called the bass player. So he's a character that is obscure and peculiar, uh, but only because he lets his head uh, and his mind get the better of him. Uh, it becomes an ego, it becomes a, a slight demon that follows him around telling him that he's not worth what he's worth or stopping him from reaching his full potential. So uh, it's a character that follows one tribulation after the other and 
you have to come check it out if you want to see if he reaches success over this demon or not. But what I can tell you that it's something that everybody has and he tries to embody that on stage to show the people that uh, the greatest obstacle one has is actually themselves. In life we all have a purpose, we all have a dream, we all have a goal. But it's our responsibility to actually work on it every single day, to keep practicing whatever it is, whether you're in the arts or not in the arts, but just to work on your gift and your purpose every single day and not lose sight or focus of that. And my character did. And I think most of us have, you know, stumbled along the way in our career paths where we've just stopped practicing or lost the passion along the way. So it's just a little reminder that don't. Keep on pushing, keep on sharpening your tools that, you, that God gave you. Don't you dare tell me that I have no ability in carrying my own dream. Who asked you to pick it up? I wait and I stand for it, damn it. Are you it's tough to believe in yourself. It really is tough because you have self-doubt, you have a lot of things. But with this story, it speaks about a suitcase and the producer character says, let us open up our boxes. I say, let us open up our boxes now. We tend to forget the power that we have. We tend to forget that we, we filter file away our dreams and forget about them and never work on them. So I just want to encourage people to, to really believe in self and really understand what you're here to do. Having won an Ovation Merit Award at the National Arts Festival and with incredibly well-received performances at two Joburg theatres, Milt Voice hits the road once more to inspire us to reach for our dreams. Coming up after the break, we get into our yoga pants and tackies because it's time for a little afternoon workout. Fitness instructor Claude Paul says here to show us a great workout you can do right here in your home. Plus, we're making a great post-workout smoothie. <laughs> I held it for a long time. Eh?
Introducing Clover Care, the first enriched milk packed with nutrients to help you take extra care of your whole family. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. Get your sunglasses out. No, it's not a solar flare. I am just this pasty. I want you guys to get off your couches right now and enjoy and join me in a little bit of an exercise routine on the show today. Just help us realize that even though it's winter, we need to keep active, keep coming because summer is on its way. And we're joined in studio today by personal trainer Claude, who is here to show us a quick and easy exercise routine that you can do in the comfort of your own home, followed by the perfect post-workout smoothie brought to you by Clover Care. So I want you to do something specific for me. South Africa. Get up off the couch right now and come and do this. Get that selfie arm of yours ready. Take a photo, post it on our Twitter pages, hashtag Afternoon Express, and I will be taking a look to make sure that you're exercising too. So tweet us throughout this routine and show us what you've got. All right, deal. Let's do it, Claude. Dan, you ready, eh? I'm ready. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get our heart rate up, blood flowing. So we're going to start with some high knees. All right. Here we go. You've got it? Yep, I Here got it. Go. Nice. I'm used to calling Jeannie yeah, your highness, but I mean high knees <laughs> does the same. A little bit higher and a little bit faster. That's it. So now you your blood is, that's it. The blood is flowing. Uh -huh. There we go. Heart rate is up. So now you're going to step back. Okay. So what you can do is we're going to do an upper body exercise. So you don't need any equipment as such because we can do this in-house, out-of-house when you okay. go on holiday as well. Good. So here we go. I want you to go down in your push-up position. Yeah. Flatten your glutes. Yeah. Just pop your chest a bit for me. We're going to do five push-ups. Is it fine, eh? Got it. Easy. Okay. Five's easy. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, and go. One. That's it. Two, three, three. four, five. Can you do one more? Of course. Here easy. we go. Nice. And now you push back. And how was that? Very easy. This awesome. is like start a pack. Nice. So what Next. we're going to do is now we're going to do an inchworm that will target your back as well, eh? Oh, wow. So we call it the inchworm, eh? So what you need to do is, this exercise you can do at home and holiday anyway. So what you're going to do is you're going to do inchworm there, tighten that core. Yeah. There we go. And come back again. Walk back. Stand up straight, straight. Push your torso up, eh? That's it, There eh? we go. And we push again. Let's do another. Stomach in, chest out. Here we go. Let's do another two. Cool. Right, gotcha. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go, there we go, one. So a nice trick, we, trick for this one is obviously to keep your core tight yes, all the way. Exactly. And yes, exactly. that's how you get that activation in your back. Yes, here we go. And Ooh. two, so it's nice activation in the back and also in the core as well. Lovely. So now we're going to go through the legs, eh? Cool. So we're going to do a squat, but on we're going to do 10 squats, 10 squats, and then we're going to do five jump squats, eh? Gotcha. Just for that advancement, eh? So what you need to do is, I want your kneecaps behind your toes, push your hands up, that's a proper squat, and come back, and tighten your glutes as well. So squeeze the bum. Squeeze button. your glutes, yeah. That's good. I like good. To do it this way. So you yeah. go down into a squat. <laughs> you there come you up go. and you squeeze, squeeze the bum. Squeeze your glutes. Gotcha. Yeah, nice Take activation. a photo of that and send it to us. <laughs> Hashtag Afternoon Express. Right, All right, let's go. So five. five. Yes, let's go. One. Here we go. Two. Two. Squeeze that glutes, eh? I'm squeezing Three. them. Three. <laughs> Can't you tell? Four. Four. <laughs> squeeze. Five. five and relax. The other five, we're going to do a time squat just for that people that's on that advanced level as well. An one, explosive eh? exercise. Explosive, yes. Let's go. One. one. That's it. Two. Two. Come on, let's go. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. five. And relax. Okay, now we're going to cater for the course. So we're going to do a, a sit up, eh? By touching your, your, your kneecaps as oh, well. Oh, this is my weak area. So if you guys are like me and you have weak abs, this is the one for you. <laughs> Good. So what you need to do is push your hands here. Yeah. Push up and hug your knees. That's it. Can we do 10 of this, guys? Easy. Right, easy. let's go. Push through. One. One. Let's go. <laughs> Two. Two. Don't leave me, hey? Three. Three. <laughs> Try to extend your legs. Oh, four. four. When you go back. Five. Five. That's it. Oh, 10. Woo! Six. Come Six. on, let's go. Faster. I can do this. Seven. That's it. Let's go. Eight. Eight. Push through. Nine. Nine. Ten. Ten. That's a stand up. <sighs> Beautiful. You did well, hey? Thank you very much, dude. So awesome. It's like nice. a whole body workout, did a little bit of legs. Yeah. Did a little bit of um, core work, a little bit of arms. A holistic approach, eh? <sighs> Within your own house, own comfortability as well, eh? I love it. Because awesome. exercise has become like a recent part of my journey. I mean, I'm training towards a triathlon in October and I'm trying yeah. to change my eating schedule. Okay. And um, because I usually go with the smoothies because you can get the maximum amount of nutrients yes. in a short space of time. So yeah. you've prepared one with us with Clover Care. Yeah. What have you made? So what we have here today is we Ooh. have this Clover K milk, which is very rich in, in vitamins. Yeah. So we have 10 vitamins in it as well. We have three added calcium um, 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 in it as well. And also we have vit um, vitamin D as well, 
which is Stunning. good for bones as well, and also for the ob absorption of calcium as well. Which is really cool because a lot of your yes. nutrients that you're eating at home, like whether it's been, even if you think it's good nutrients, vegetables, etc., isn't carrying the amount of nutrients that you should actually be getting in your diet. So yes. to be able to supplement it with something as regular as your milk is really good. So let's make our smoothie. Okay, can we go? Okay, so we're gonna pour from this milk in over here. Okay. And anyone can use it at home, mate. Eh? It's user-friendly for the kids, for the little ones, for the grannies. Okay, as there well. we go. That's it. That's cool. I think that's enough for now. Yeah. Okay. Then what good. are you adding to it? Like, can I chop some bananas yes, for you? Go for it. Go oh, these are frozen. It. It's frozen ones, yeah. Oh, why do you make there them frozen? We go. It's easier to put into the blender and also the coldness as well. Okay. Because also the bananas also have lots of um, potassium as well, hey? Oh. And it helps just with the cramping as well. Oh, I see. That's why we throw it in as well, yes. So this could probably be used as a sort of post, a yes. post workout as well, yeah. We have our peanut butter over here that is sugar free as well. It also stabilizes the blood sugar levels in our body as well, which is very good as well. Okay, great. And obviously, like I mentioned, this clover care that we've done, we've already used, we've also put a whole bunch of it inside like a, an ice tray. And inside the ice tray, obviously, you freeze these. Yes. It creates a nice blitzed uh, summer version of, yes. of, this, of this smoothie, which we'll be making for you. And then we mentioned earlier on that the clover care, what's cool about it is it's got all those extra nutrients in it. Over 10 extra vitamins yes. and a whole bunch of extra calcium in there, which is really good for your body. Yes. Right, you need what's to this? add your, your protein powder, which is chocolate. Oh, yeah, oh a boy G. Of, a little bit of sweetness after the training. <laughs> Yeah, no, boy, gee, the protein, eh, bro? Yes, there we go. So it's high in fiber, I would Chia seeds. Chia seeds, mm. high in fiber, high in protein, and omega-3 as well. Stunning. So all you're going to do is then blitz this guy up. Yes, Let's there see if we I go. Know how to do first. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And then there we go. Awesome, that's good. Just like that, and we've got yes. a smoothie. Take it off, then you need to pour it in, and there you go. It's a great post-workout uh, smoothie over here. And I'm still waiting for all of those photos on our social media account. Hashtag Afternoon Express at Afternoon Chat. If you did some exercise with us on the show today, I'd love to see it. Dude, should we say cheers? Yes, cheers. Cheers to you. Awesome. The Thanks. show is going to continue after these. Mm. Yummy, well done. That's a nice one. Yes. Introducing Clover Care, the first enriched milk packed with nutrients to help you take extra care of your whole family. Made with love by Clover. Express
<laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And it seems I've been busted in the kitchen, but I simply could not resist a taste of this absolutely delicious smoothie. If you would like it too, remember, all you need to do is SMS the keyword clover to double three six five zero, and there we will send you all of the information that you need in order to prepare one of these your very uh, by your very self in your kitchen at home. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> And speaking of homes, Win a Home SA's premier interior design reality competition is proudly brought to you by Private Property. Now, if you vote for your favorite design duo, you could win incredible prizes in the bi-weekly giveaway. The latest prize up for grabs is a Grower's Smart Control rain shower system valued at 11,000 Rand. It's a huge prize. So get your entries in now and stand a chance of not only winning the bi-weekly prize, but you could also get automatically entered into the grand prize, a home of your very own at the Eye of Africa Golf and residential estate. This home comes with finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone and premier appliances by Grundig to the total value of, listen to this, 3 million rand. So take a look at how you can enter. This is your chance to win the home you've always dreamed of. SA's favorite interior design reality competition, Winner Home, sees three design duos transform empty spaces into lavish homes and one of them could be yours. To enter, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. Put yourself in line to win amazing prizes in the bi-weekly draw and automatically be entered for a chance to win the grand prize, your choice of one of three fully designed homes in the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate in the south of Joburg. The finished property will include luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grunding with a total prize value of more than 3 million rand. Competition details plus T's and C's can be found on the private property website. Watch the breathtaking properties come to life as the design drama unfolds and stand a chance to win the biggest prize on South African television, your very own dream home. Oh, I still can't get my head around it. Winning a home, that is it's honestly crazy, the yeah. best prize in the it's whole Maybe world. even better than getting 14 million rand deposited into your account after, after an issue with you know, the <laughs> bank deposits. <laughs> now, coming up next week at the new Stefan Feltz and Co's premises in Johannesburg is an art exhibition that explores the idea of city life. It brings together 14 local established and emerging artists together. And we're joined now by art specialist Kayleen Ringley. And she's made the business of art or, yeah, her business. So she's here to tell us a bit more about this exhibition and how we should go about investing in art. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you for having me. Now, I think you've got possibly one of the best jobs yeah. in the world. <laughs> but I want to know, what is the difference between an art specialist and an art curator? Um, they're much the same. Part of our job is curating art. Uh, I specifically work within an auction house environment, so yeah. um, we bring in art, we then auction it off, but a big part of that is curating and um, curating our auctions, basically. So yeah, okay. I suppose uh, being a curator is um, part of being an art specialist. Yeah. So you've obviously got to have a really good or keen eye uh, for it. Yeah. So, I mean, you specialise in sculpture, prints and what was Painting. the other one? Paintings. So all that kind of fine arts. Yeah. I mean, what's pretty outside much. of that though? Pretty much. So as an auction house, we deal with pretty much all collectibles. So things like furniture, silverware, jewelry, oh. uh, clocks. Um, so my specific department is the fine art, but anything else collectible is what are the, our other specialists? Yeah. I just want to get there, because I mean, you would have, I uh, assume, like studied fine art or something, and then, yes, then how do you yes. get to the point of being like a specialist where people come and seek you out for this job? <laughs> so I think, as with all fields, you know, one has to read up a lot. It's a lot about exposure, you know, attending those gallery openings, mm. visiting museums, reading up a lot, um, you know, just gaining exposure yeah. in the There's industry. two kinds of kids that go to art school. There's ones that are like, oh, the theory, just let me do the practical. <laughs> and those are like, theory, theory, theory. Yes. You're the theory person. Absolutely. I went to art school. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I was reading up recently because I think, I mean, my dream is to have an art gallery one day. And I was reading up that actually Africa and South Africa is taking over the world, mm. I suppose, in, in new art. And, and it's so exciting. I, th I think if you look at the gallery opening up in Cape Town, there's so many galleries now opening up in Joburg. 
Is it a good idea to invest in local artists? I mean, is that where we should be buying at the moment? I would definitely say so. I mean, the African art market on the whole is the most underpriced market globally. Wow. Um, we've got some great quality uh, art across the continent, not just in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think they have a lot to say that suddenly um, there's been this global focus on the continents yeah. of yeah. Africa. Yeah. And, um, as I said, it's some of the most underpriced art mm. artwork in the world. So, so then who should definitely. we be looking at? And like, who are the artists that we should be looking at? And what should we be looking at when looking to buy local art? Well, the first rule of art collecting is buy what you love. Uh, if something mm. speaks to you, buy that. If something is going to look brilliant above your couch, buy that. Um, so absolutely buy what you love, but then also perhaps take your collection in a certain direction. So, for example, if you are really into photography, concentrate your collection around photography. Okay. Um, if you're really into, you know, mid-century modern uh, vibe of furniture, match your art up yeah. with, with that same sort of scenery. Awesome. All of this is going to come to a head. All these artists you're talking about are going to come to a head at the exhibition that you're going to be at. And, uh, yes, and some absolutely. of the artists are obviously going to be on screen at the moment. Do you mind talking us through some of these, these pieces of art? So we'll scroll through them and you can stop us where you want to talk through these pieces. Perfect. So the exhibition is happening at our New Joburg premises at the Kalani Country Club. Mm -hmm. um, the exhibition really talks about city life and particularly Johannesburg city life. Okay. You know, and I think it's contrasts. Um, you'll find, you know, an image like this, for example, where you've got so many materials bound up within the work, and um, it, it just it talks about, you know, so many cultures coming together within mm. the city, and also the fact that it's not just a flat piece of material. The, the, the fact that it takes, you know, the role Shape, of a, fi yeah. a figure, you know, just it says a lot about, you know the person within the city. Yeah. Um, this work, for example, is an artist who I, I, I just find so entrepreneurial. He actually, his, his mantra is that anyone can be an artist, despite, mm. so despite whether you, you can afford paint material, because this is by the same artist, Butelezi, and what he essentially does is he collects plastic, found, found plastic, he then um, mosaics it onto a backing board and then wow. melts the plastic and then goes over it with paint to create these evocative images. Wow. So in real life, is this actually completely 3D? It is somewhat 3D. What he's Just done like is bubble, he's yeah. melted mm. the plastic. So it, def it definitely is texturized, yes. Wow. Oh, stunning. Let's look at some more of those photos that you've got. Wow, yes. that's a telling a story on its own. Yes, yes. So this one here is by Paula Lowe. And I think, you know, especially in a city that's that's seen as much violence as, as Johannesburg, I think it really has something strong to say in terms of, you know, the soft fabric and in terms of, you know, let's quiet down violence. Mm. Let's, um, mm. you know, put it to bed. Um, it's a great one to do. I love that imagery. Yes. And then, of course, we have, you know, one of the auction house favorites, Roger Vallon, very well-known photographer who, who loves to sort of um, play between the playful and the horrific, you know. Um, <laughs> and here yeah, we have sort of what might look at as horrific monsters, but it does have that playful element in terms of the figure at the top chasing the figure at the bottom. And mm -hmm. it, yes, it's, you could sort of read it either way. It looks like me when I wake that. up in the morning. <laughs> 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 All right, so there are going to be some great pieces that are really celebrating what South Africa is doing in terms of this art scene. And I, you, you could experience that. And we had an interview early on in the show. The first interview we spoke about was trying to incorporate cultures. Are a lot of diverse South Africans coming to these exhibitions? Definitely. I mean, we're seeing more and more with um, the Jupiter Project, which uh, does the first Thursdays, both in Cape Town and in Johannesburg, where it's a place not only to see art, but to be seen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's become somewhat of, I mean, anyone who's anyone is out on the first mm. Thursday of every month. And I think it's, it's just making art so much yeah. more accessible. And the yeah. fact that the galleries have come to the party and kept galleries open, you know, later on a Thursday, um, you know, it's, it's, I definitely think art is becoming mm. more, mm. more accessible. And give people a glass of wine and of course they're going to look at lots of art and they're going to be of excited course. about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you give them enough, they'll even buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. It's thank so fascinating. Thank you so much for coming You're... to chat to us. It's been well, really amazing. Well, thanks for having me. And thank you for sharing all of this beautiful art with us. And I wish you the best. So, uh, just to wrap up, your yes. event is on the 5th of September. Where about is the, the gallery? It's the 7th of September. Yeah. It's at the Kalani Country Club in Johannesburg. Uh, there will be an opening function on the 6th.
six uh, at six p.m. on the fifth, and mm. then a curated walkabout at six p.m. on the Amazing. following day. This Lovely. Brilliant. Yes. So she mentioned entrepreneurs, and that's the kind of question we're asking on our social media feeds. Mm. And we're speaking about supporting local entrepreneurs. Does that influence people's buying habits? Um, and we're running a poll on our Twitter page at the moment. So afternoon chat, go and find it. It's pinned to the top, so you can find that immediately. Uh, and the comments that we got through uh, for first option was it builds our economy. Fifty nine percent of you are saying yes to that. Uh, you only care about the price. 30% of you are saying about that, which I think is a good one to consider. And then uh, at 11% has never thought about it, really. Supporting local entrepreneurs doesn't influence your buying decisions. I think what you're trying to say is buy local because, yes, it will influence your buying decisions. Absolutely. It's cheap, yeah. It is. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, but coming up after the break, we sit down with entrepreneur Bulelani Mvoto, who has been running a mobile cinema in the townships for 10 years, highlighting local filmmakers and bringing films to the community. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, for many of us, watching a film is as easy as streaming it online, turning on the TV or popping down to the nearest shopping centre for a cinema experience. But for many South Africans, this luxury is far out of their reach. Bulelani Mvoto noticed this 10 years ago and took it upon himself to make a difference. My name is Bulelani Mvoto. I am the founder of Snapshot Mobile Cinema. Snapshot Mobile Cinema is a community cinema 
that is there to bring films and to entertain whilst educate um, the communities around the city. We are mostly based in Kailicha. The service is brilliant for us, especially township people. Bulelani is giving the service to us. We don't go to town, mostly because cinemas are far and you have to travel and you have to pay a lot of money. Here in screenings we pay 20 rand. That is very affordable. The types of films shown at the Snapshot film Cinema are good films and you can be able to learn some, some things in them. The films are quite very interesting uh, because they are more local. They also uh, emphasize on the local experiences. Even the discussions were very progressive, you know, because we get to, we get to think uh, broadly and critically about issues. So yeah, I think we need more of Bulelanis in our township. It's, it's a role model for me, you know. You're the dream maker. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thanks for having me. Where did the idea come from? Um, this was out of having to experience an inaccessibility to go and watch cinemas, I mean films and cinemas. Mm. So after that, I realized that it's not only me, but the rest of the entire community, that they don't have, get to go and enjoy themselves mm. by watching films in the townships, yes. So what you guys ended up doing was you built these quite solid structures in different regions and then bring the, the, the films to that with your projectors as you go. And recently one of your, uh, one of your stations was vandalized. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. What um, happened? Yeah, basically it's one of those um, protests, so which in Oof. one case they started to destroy everything. It's one of the stations that we basically use. So, but because of these, um, um, they ju just went on to destroy and destruct Yo. the structure. So it it's basically shows sometimes politics can affect the good that the community has. Mm. Yeah. And it, it, it just has a ripple effect in everyone. And it obviously displays one of the many struggles that you might have and mm. must have when putting on all of these amazing shows. Mm. How do you have access to the shows and how do you choose the shows that you want to show within in each community? Well, at the moment, um, we select the films. Mm. In fact, we go and consult with the filmmakers. We identify those filmmakers. Wow. And then we sit and talk and negotiate because we still don't have the, the, the licensing rights to their films. So we try and negotiate for them for special licenses. And then once they agree to add to that, and then we start to go and organize the shows. And then we'll select now in terms of which community should we go to, yeah. uh, depending on the demand mm. in that particular moment. Yeah. However, the response has been so phenomenal. Stunning. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. What's so unique about what you guys are doing is that you're not just uh, broadcasting all the big sort of Hollywood films, mm. you're broadcasting uniquely African content, uh, content especially edutaining content. Yes, um, because uh, we believe we still need to empower a lot of our young people mm. about understanding the social issues that are affecting them on a daily basis. So in our content, we always be selective towards that, that kind of a content. Mm. So by end of each screening, they need to know at least or have learned something mm. out of the screening itself. So which is why we mostly on local content other than the Hollywood style content. And it's a proper night out because you screen the film and mm. then after the film, you have like a little discussion session oh, where you so break epic. down the content. What was the idea behind that? I think that's brilliant. It's more about, one, to engage with the filmmaker themselves yeah. and to find out what it took them to create such yeah. piece of work. So the filmmakers actually come to the screenings as yes, well? Yes, oh, we, we invite them. Something. We yeah. make sure that in every screening, the filmmaker will have to be present. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is also entirely to, to, to engage with these young people because some of them are aspirant filmmakers. They want yeah. to tell their stories, but they don't know how to penetrate the industry. Mm. So which is why now we invite them so they can share such experiences mm. of how to go about and also things to do. And if ever there's more information about institution that you can go and study about um, filmmaking, then they get to get that info kind of information. So, so where does it go from here? So now you're screening these films, you're getting young filmmakers to, to screen their work, to talk about their work, mm -hmm. you're engaging communities about local content, about these issues that are in their communities. Where does this go from here? I mean, I know you said you're trying to provide bursary institutions and sort of like uh, mm -hmm. tertiary institutions for these, these filmmakers to go to. What is the hope and the dream for this as it continues to grow? 
The ultimate dream is that I wish in every corner of South Africa, especially the rural areas, there could be access to this kind of cinema because it comes with that information. It's a package. So once we can see that, I'll be happy, I'll be a happy man, in fact. And on top of that, each and every young person get to realize that they've got the responsibility and there's always more opportunities out there mm. that one can always pay.